All right, Big Mang, today is Wednesday. It's uh, May 3rd. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Um, Chief, Eddie, Danny. Um, Chief, how are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. How are you doing? You asked that as if you just like suffered a loss. How are you doing? Man? I just got a text that pissed me off. Oh, just uh, now? Just like one second di- ago. Can you divulge? It, it's unless it's, if it's Blackhawks related. Then no, 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 no. It's not Blackhawks related. It's just like you know, you just have. It, I would say it's like a meddling text. Like I don't need. I don't need to hear from this person. I'll just say that. Like just <laughs> shut up. Don't meddle. Leave me alone. There's a meddling owner. No, not a meddling owner. It's not Blackhawks related. It's like personal life related. Well, like it's, and not, it's like a okay. third party. Like just butt out. Shut up. So it's not like a barstool thing related. No, okay. no, no, no. That's what I mean. A, a meddling text at four on a Tuesday. It, it, Interesting. It, it happened. The first initial one came when we were like sitting down to do the mid show, and I just replied. I'm like, blah blah blah, like whatever. And then like this person like doubled down. And it's like I, I don't need to talk to you. I don't need to talk to you. Can we ask the gender? Sure, it's a it's a female. Oh okay. no! Yeah, it's a whole different scenario. It's not. It's just. I'm sick whatever. of biting your ear. <laughs> no, no, it's nothing like <laughs> nothing remotely close to that. It's enough for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Weren't you just having an issue with uh, conversations? An issue with conversations <laughs> with, 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 in general. Yeah, well, just it's like tough uh, if he's having an issue with meddling, conversations. If this is his speaking. job, wouldn't you say the meddling? Uh, do we have a meddling cleaners here or something? Oh, no. So we kind of go through janitors here. And the other day I was telling Harry, he had brought it up. There's a new woman janitor who's like off the boat from Africa, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she just randomly goes up to me and she goes, is table tennis big here in Chicago? And I was like, I wouldn't say big, but like, I'm sure you could find some places to play. Isn't there that one sweet bar? Right. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. And I was like... I was like, you mean like recreationally? And she's like, no, my niece is going to move from, I think, like Uganda to here. And she is basically a pro table tennis player. And I was like, all right. I mean, I'm I'm sure she could find some spots to play in the city, some like a Mm -hmm. bar like you just mentioned. And she's like, well, like she wants to get paid. Like she, (laughs) she's a pro table tennis athlete, apparently. And she's showing me all her highlights on Facebook. She's pretty good. But then she was like, I just I just want you to let me know, because if not, I'll tell her to move to another state within the United States. I was like, this is a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> the entire future of this immigrant tennis table tennis player, on your opinion? Basically. And I was like, I'm sure Chicago is not the biggest table tennis state in the U.S. And now it's like I kind of have to do research on table tennis in America for is the sake of what you, you find. Uh, There's I gotta haven't, be, I haven't right? done it yet. She comes back tonight. Yeah. But like, would you even move to the U.S. for table tennis? Land of opportunity. Like, what, yeah. if she, what if she comes here and like the table tennis scene is weak, and she's like, "Why did you tell me to tell my niece to move in Chicago with me? Her career's not taking off at all. Now she has to go back to Uganda." Yeah, so like I was just watching the game. It's a sticky situation to get involved in. Mm-hmm. Next thing you looks know, looks like I, the headquarters is in Colorado Springs, but. For the USA Table Tennis Association. Okay. That's so, good to know. Danny. Uh, okay. Yep. I'll, I'll pass it along. Pass that along. Colorado Springs. I don't mm-hmm. know how, like, could you just, if you're pro in Uganda, Africa, wherever it is, you just walk into the States and like, hey, give me yeah, a spot at the this table? Works. Yeah, better hope this works out. She's not going to, you know, take out a garbage, is, you know. Yeah. My niece is at home unemployed fire. right now because <laughs> of you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be, that would be no good. That's funny. Well, though. here's another problem though. It looks, according to this Wikipedia page for the USA Table Tennis, is uh, really hasn't been updated since 2017. So maybe she should just go to a whole different country. That would probably be, be my recommendation. Like, I know it's big in, like, Scandinavia and, and Asia and places really? like that. Oh, yeah. Like, if you watch, like, uh, like the big table tennis, like, competitions, like, it's, a, it's an Olympic sport and everything. Yeah. It's always, like, somebody from the Far, v- far East versus somebody from Sweden. Like, almost always. I was wondering if it was going to be... Something in the, I was like, I think it's an Olympic sport, but then I was like, maybe I saw it on like the Ocho when they do that once a year. Mm-hmm. You know, what do they do? Like the ESPYs day or something? Yeah, they yeah. show all the random yeah, shit. Yeah, like the yeah. random sports. Now, Th- those, it feels like one of those things I feel like could take off. Like, or, like when you see the highlights, like I get sucked in. Like it's like the perfect TikTok sport. Mm-hmm. Like 30 seconds at a time, they're like 40 feet away from the table. Like 
with the crazy spin. It is entertaining, but I would never want to watch a full match. Are you of the belief if anything falls into the right algorithm, it could take off? I don't know enough about algorithms. Think about it, this. Okay. Think about this. Why wouldn't they just pay for that then? Two things that have taken off. Pickleball, mm -hmm. right? It's supposed to be like the fast growing spore, like Brady has yep. an investment in it. And remember when the Queen's Gambit went on Netflix and like mm -hmm. chess boards like across the nation were like sold out? I also feel like that was a COVID. That was like a perfect storm for chess. So like the Queen's Gambit. And then everyone's like, oh, maybe I'll play because we're locked inside. So I'll just play against my girlfriend. And then everybody played once and then they caused relationship problems. And that was the end of chess. Would, you say, would you say Queen's Gambit, though, is like falling into the algorithm or is it just like a trending? It's because of the show, obviously. When I say the algorithm, <laughs> like you fall into like, like a, like a gener uh, generic Internet. Yeah, you fall into like an an inner like an interest group that's mm -hmm. revolved around the Internet. I'm sure like there were a bunch of pilots air force people after top gun that i wanted to be one right yeah <clears throat> like yeah yeah sure but Chad, i was uh, like six be becoming a chess player might be a little easier than that though the grand champion i don't know i bet you then, there's more fighter pilots than grand champions well grand champion sure that's that's God. the top though i'm saying just that's you know joining in general oh just yeah I consider like the fucking word of mouth basically the algorithm now, <laughs> you know. You've always considered it that. <laughs> yeah. You want to go back to 1955. It's like, yeah, my buddy told me this. Would you go back to 1955 right now? I asked this question on one of my one of the blogs I wrote because they the guy who uh, is considered the godfather of AI is like, we have to shut this down right now. So it, like he quit Google and was like, we have to stop AI because he's yeah. like, it's out of control. So then I was thinking like, all right. Technology in the future is going to fuck everything up. Like, I'm, when is actually, like, the good old days where things mm -hmm. were actually good? Because if you go back to 55, like, not everybody had rights. That was pretty bad. Yeah. I'd say that was bad. And, uh, you know, like Jim Crow and all that. You don't want to exactly go back there. But now it's like some of that stuff is better. But, like, the economy stinks. Our food stinks. The dollar stinks. There, we got a war going on. It's like, I don't know if it's good right now. Social media fucking, you know, is annoying. Um, so it's like, I wonder like when is like, if you, if you like balanced all those things out, when was the time when people were actually the happiest across the world? Like what a time to be alive was actually true. Yeah. Like if there was like, and no era is ever going to be perfect, but I wonder if they could measure some way, how to measure like human happiness or well being, And if it's, you know, and if there was a period of time that was actually like pretty good. Don't they say the eighties? Yeah, I think most people would say 80s like 70s or, 90s. or 80s just because everyone was like a hippie. It was carefree. I don't know about the 80s. Maybe the, maybe the 90s. Yeah. But they, I've seen that, like, they always do those, like, shows, whereas, and they call the 90s, like, the last great decade. I guess the economy was booming. The internet was a thing, but it didn't dominate your life the way it does now. You mm -hmm. had uh, TV and better information, some better technology. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the 90s is part of that equation. They say 90s kids are the most depressed or like nostalgic because there was a clear divide in our childhood, like pre-internet, post-internet. When you were a kid, you were playing at the park and everything. Then mm -hmm. as you got into a teenager, you got a cell phone. So yeah. Do they say that? That's what they say. Uh, what they, year were you born? 92. And you? 90. Okay. So I'm the only 80s baby mm -hmm. here. So you guys barely, barely even remember the 90s then? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, the, late, the later half, you know, like yeah. uh, 98. Jordan was sweet to 2000 ish. Maybe Jordan was sweet Jordan. And then like, don't remember him. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. So I don't know. It's like, a I maybe in our lifetime, it's the nineties, but I wonder if you go back to like, were the Greeks happier? Yeah. Yeah. You wonder. It's a good question. Yeah. It's a good wonder. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Uh, side note to back to the table tennis thing though. Mm -hmm. Now be honest, sizing her up. Was she that good? She wasn't like some of the, Asian American players, you see, I'll say that okay. I wasn't like switching my head back and forth trying to see the ball. She held her own. Would she get worked by Jake Marsh? Would Jake Marsh stand over her and say, "I am the best in the office. <laughs> I am the best one here." And then it didn't seem like it. No. Okay. Oh, she can't even beat Jake Marsh. Oh, I'm sorry. Vice versa. Oh, she would. It, be it Jake. didn't seem like Jake Marsh would be doing that. Gotcha. To her. Okay. Oh, okay. She right. would be the All best right. in the office. Good. Okay. Good. Good. How old was she? Seventeen. That's a good question. I didn't get too into semantics. Okay. I would say at least eighteen. Okay. Good. I kind of feel like I wonder what your peak is for table tennis. Like right. What's a prime time table tennis? Because it's not like you have to be like a super athlete. Mm -hmm. You're only moving probably 
back and forth. It's more like hand-eye coordination. If right. you have just long arms. When is your hand-eye coordination at its peak? Probably goes down at the same time as any, everything else, like 25. Yeah. Just drops. Turn it all ends. It's kind of weird how, like, as soon as that they say that you're, uh, if you're a man, your brain doesn't fully function or, or doesn't isn't fully developed until ages between ages 25 and 27. But then that's also when, like, your testosterone starts declining and your physical abilities start declining is, like, you go up to 25 and then it's just a gradual decline until you get to, like, 30. Then it's, like, a fucking steep cliff. It's weird that we just never have it all going all at once. It'd be too much. It'd be nice, though. Is it the frontal lobe isn't fully until, yeah, yeah. until 25 it is? 25. They say, Now there's some people are saying 27 because oh, I thought it was people are getting first. dumber all the time. But, no, it's, I think women are 23. Like, they have theirs earlier than men. Um, the frontal lobe. Yeah, but your prefrontal cortex, and that's how you do all, like, your, your complex decision-making and things like that. And you're, like, it's like you have, like, you're not as emotionally stable, and you just do more stupid shit because your brain's not fully developed. And then as soon as your brain's fully developed, your body sucks and more starts to suck. It's a bummer. Yeah. People are always like, uh, oh, you know, in movies or whatever, real life, don't listen to them. They're, they're just a kid. And then you'll have people being like, no, they're the future, whatever. If we just phrase it as like they don't even have their fully frontal lobe Oh, I say that all yet, the time. You know, and make people be like, oh, that's a good point. Their brain is literally not fully formed yet. That's what. So I've got a brother who's ten years younger than me. And it's deep, Danny. Right. That I would I would use that and be like we'd be arguing about something like you don't even have a brain. You're like you literally don't have a fully <laughs> functioning brain. I'm sure, he loved brain. that. Oh, he that was that was like that was checkmate. But it like got the rage out because he didn't have a prefrontal cortex so uh, fully developed because so it's all like one vicious cycle. But yeah, so when he was like 21, 22, he didn't really like that very much. Now, what do you say to someone who does have a fully developed brain that is still just a maniacal person? Anyone in particular? Nope. Who are you thinking about? No one. F fully developed brain, like on the books, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, like statistically, their brain should yes. be. But like, it's on an indiv individual to individual basis. You need like a CAT scan to be <laughs> to f figure out which parts are missing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of just, if people, and I was saying this to somebody the other day too, where it's like, you'll give like, um, you know, a, a guy in their twenties, like a lot of leeway, you know, especially their early twenties. Like, yeah, he's just a kid. If you're like an asshole or a moron by the time you're, let's say th 32, then you're just an asshole and a moron. Mm -hmm. And I just like, then I just like dismiss you. I just don't want, don't want anything to do with you. You're out of my life. That's kind of how, how old is like too old for that person to change? You think? Do you want like my actual opinion or like the optimistic worldview? Actual. Well, I would say let, let's make it a little bit personal. I would say that my dad, uh, not that he was ever an asshole, but I would say that he has had some enlightenment and development much later uh, in life. You know, after he turned maybe 60, uh, he kind of, I don't know, changed some things. So maybe I think it's possible that you could always, it's but fair. it takes yeah. some, takes some work. Takes a um, certain life experience that yeah. might not come till later. Yeah. yeah, or like some big event <clears throat> that might change your worldview on something. Uh, but yeah, I think typically like, and I would actually say that if you're a fucking, they, they really say that if your child is not properly socialized by the time that they're four, <sighs> they're probably going to be dicks like their entire lives. Really? Yeah. What's so, properly socialized? Like what if they're uh, just hanging heart, in the corner? No, but it's like, so like if you look at a two-year-old, a two-year-old will like throw tantrums and be violent and do all that stuff. And if they're still doing that at four, like the, exhibiting those types of behavior at four, like they're not like they would call that properly socialized, then they're like, they're going to be a, a problem for like the rest of their lives. Like your, your likelihood to go um, into the prison system is like way higher if you're still <laughs> exhibiting those behaviors at four if you're throwing play-doh around at preschool yeah yeah and who or told you it is dr lipschitz i can't remember where <laughs> i heard this to be honest but some podcast somewhere and yeah that's crazy that is so it's like if you it's like you might be a fucking psychopath like your kid might be a psychopath he's still being uh, dude what do you do if your kid's a psychopath yeah i i don't know i don't know there's a super fucked up movie that i've been meaning to watch that i guess has that premise and uh I guess it's like one of the hardest watches you could ever have. Really? Like this movie. It's called uh, What About Kevin or I'm Worried About Kevin or something. Like I've heard like it also is like a 
advise like do not watch movie if you have kids because it'll like fuck you up What's oh the, jesus like, why would they even make it. a movie like that then? well because it's it's a psychologically it's a good movie um, yeah, it sounds awesome. Well, but it's like it's, <laughs> don't watch this. You might want to kill your children. Real family. No, they don't want to kill them. But it's 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 if your kid is bad. Yeah, well, you know that's what I, mean? what I mean. If your kid's bad, you're like, should I kill my kid? Is that what they're saying? Don't watch it for. Hold on, let me look it up. So what? He's like he's a two, four, whatever, and they're like this guy's just not learning. We gotta watch out for him. Do you want me to read the IMDb? Yeah, it's called uh, spoilers. It's called We Need to Talk About Kevin. Mm. Kevin's mother struggles to love her strange child despite the increasingly dangerous things he says and does as he grows up. <laughs> but Kevin is just getting started, and his final act will be beyond anything anyone imagined. Ooh, eerie. that's dark. That's, so well, you that's like probably a, know where this is going. School shooter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know if that's how the movie goes. Yeah. I've never seen it, but it's been on my list because um, I like <laughs> fucked up. We have shit. very different lists. But I, I, I don't know. I I'm like to go like, home and watch like Casablanca or something, <laughs> which you haven't seen. Oh, well, yeah, Put yeah. that on your list. It's a little bit sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but I heard like I like uh, I like the movie Kids a lot. That's one of the most fucked up yeah. movies ever too. Um, but I heard legitimately if you have kids, you have a lot of fucked up interests. Like, you like, I do. Like, I do. Like, I'll admit that. Yeah. yeah I'll admit psycho, that. Psycho children. He, he loves uh, like the the Reddit pages that are all about like gruesome murders and unsolved murders. <laughs> but like I, it's. <laughs> He's like, how do I explain this without I mean, sounding like a psychopath? I, I acknowledge it's like super. Yeah. It's the up. same as like girls being obsessed with true crime. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure is. It's weird. Yeah. But. I, I heard something. I can't remember. I heard this. But it's either. interesting. Like what makes people fucking tick? Totally, I agree. Know? Did you ever think about major in, in psych or anything? Or? Yeah, I like you know when I was watching forensic files, pretty heavy. I was looking into that yeah. a little bit, but I was like, I am not smart enough. Yeah. Ah. So I minored in theater. There you go. I I was I can't remember where I saw this. It might have been like a clip of a show on TikTok, but they were talking about this professor. Did I talk? Did we talk about this last week? This yeah. professor who was like a, um, he was a, a professor of psychology at some college. And then he did this study where he was studying all of these like mass murderers in prisons. And he would go and interview them and give them like some kind of test. And then he's like, all right, like I know. So now he had like a, a data set, okay, where it's like all these people have this, whatever the trait was. They have the, these traits, they answer these questions the same, the, the, this trait in common. I'm going to give it to my students to see if there's a psychopath in my class of like 300 or whatever. So he gives it all out and they, he goes through all the results and like he, he took it as well. He goes through all the results and there was like one person who was like the psychopath. And he's like, well, this is like actually dangerous. Like this person, maybe they have murder, they have violent tendencies, like whatever. So he's like, I, I can't make it be a blind study anymore. Like that's super irresponsible. He goes through it was him. Like the professor was the one no. who like had all the same traits as Whoa. the uh, psycho, like the mass murder guys. So he never oh. acted on him, but he was like, it was like one of those things where it's like that would make you go like a little bit yeah. insane. The call is yeah. coming from yeah. inside the house. Exactly. Yeah. So. The call is coming from inside the house. Yeah, that'd be fucked up. You know, take a long look in the mirror after that one. Yeah. Are you looking at me like you want me to take it? I think you already have in some ways. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, you already passed. You don't yeah, gotta take yeah. it. But you don't think like I like another movie like I want to really watch is Requiem for a Dream. Like that's yeah, <laughs> I've never seen that. And I did like a poll probably a couple months ago. I was like, should I watch Requiem for a Dream tonight or should I watch uh, the Thing? And uh, I ended up going with the Thing, and uh, people were like, you got to be like prepared for Requiem for a Dream. I haven't seen that either. It's like one of those that you hear about. But like you're right, like you have to be. Have you seen it? Mm -mm. Yeah, we gotta That's do a fucking be the movie. One. Yeah. movie watch. Like, it's gotta be a movie watch, man. Right? What's the genre? Um, I know it's about drugs. Okay. Yeah, but it's got that. Uh, it's got the director. He directed Black Swan. He directed The Whale. And, so other uh, fucked up movies. He's got a. He's got a bunch of good, good uh, movies under his belt. Good resume. Okay. Yeah. Darren Aronofsky is his name. Okay. Um, he's he's highly regarded. Have you ever seen Mother by Jennifer Lawrence? No, he did that too. Um, but yeah, he's a he's a very highly regarded. What else? Noah, Mother, the the wrestler he did. Okay, which seen is the really good. Yeah, yep. he, he's very very notable. 
um, director. Uh, real quick here, Roback Activewear. <laughs> nice pivot. <laughs> <laughs> Activewear. If you're active, we love Roback. Best fit, best feel, the quality, the comfort, the material, everything is top notch. Fresh off a restock of the most comfortable performance joggers on this planet, you're not going to want to miss out. They're functional, they're versatile, and they're comfortable. These joggers check off every box. Great job, Danny. Mm -hmm. uh, Roback, yeah, he's got the performance hoodie. Chief's got the hat on. Uh, we're quite possibly uh, the softest hoodies we own. They really are. How soft is that thing? So soft, and it, it looks nice while still being pretty comfortable. Like it's casual enough. Exactly. Yeah, like you could you could wear that out. That's a that's a go out shirt for mm -hmm. sure. And then it's also I don't know what's going on, but it's always just fucking cold. Like you're gonna need these items to get through the month of May. Yep. So uh, get on that, and then you know Father's Day right around the corner too. They got all sorts of like great golf shirts and stuff with Roback. Big Roback guys. Yep. Get ready for spring with Roback. Use code Dog on Roback.com for twenty percent off your first purchase. That's R H O B A C K dot com. That's twenty percent off all performance hoodies, joggers, and polos with code Dog. Go do it. Um. Yeah, I don't know how to pivot out of that, but I, I do have this. <laughs> well, no no if, transitions necessary. Yeah, well, I don't. It it is an interesting topic because I think a lot of people are interested in that shit. You know. Yeah. So I don't think it's not. It's become so not weird that it's. Yeah, right. it's mainstream. It's normalized. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Maybe that's a problem. Psychopaths being normalized. Yeah, probably. They probably don't even want to be called psychopaths anymore. You have to have some more PC word for them. Yeah, maybe. What do you think about, uh, so I, I have this buddy, he, let's call him a late bloomer. Okay. I okay. was a late bloomer. Yeah. Let's call him a late bloomer. And he was, uh, he was in a, his first subset of, uh, dates going out with this girl and he, he sent a picture of the food that he went and he take a look at this platter of gyro meat that he took her out to. And I mean, what? how would you, how would you write that? Uh, to, you know, kind of go out for one of the first times. They're just going Lady in the Tramp with a piece of lamb? Yeah, just fucking doing that with a piece of meat and then, you know, just <laughs> firing gyro burps into each other's mouths. After. That's a first That's a first date? Uh, like a third. Ah. That's okay to... We should mention it's covered in onions. Yeah, and, covered and, in onions and, and tomatoes. tomatoes. And tomatoes for what it's worth. And uh, so all of our buddies, we were like fucking, fucking with them hard, being like, oh my God. And this guy, like... He famously, um, this guy famously for like a like a decade stretch he had a gyro every Sunday, so he was like, he's like this is a big part of my life. <laughs> yeah, We're getting exactly. past date three. You better be prepared. So he's Church just kind of he's, yeah, he's kind of just the gyro guy, mm -hmm. and. Um, like we're all like, oh my god, this is unreal! Like we've been dying to find the woman who could tolerate him on gear all night. <laughs> you know? But like, I might have. It's to like he's send... not a late bloomer. He just smells. <laughs> <laughs> just eats gear on every yeah. day. Yeah. Why do you leave we, me? I <laughs> might have to send you this picture to throw on the YouTube because it's just a, uh, it's a platter from a, a, a it's a place in Bridgeport called Greek Prime, and they just have these like skewers and this mm -hmm. gyro meat, and it's just it's some, not just some pitas. Yeah, it's a nice hunk of uh, yeah. meat. Yep. Onion's very tough. I wouldn't eat a raw onion within 48 hours of a date. But yeah. would, would you say gyros are, give you pretty smelly breath? Oh, yeah. Buddy. You think? Oh, yeah. More, not not even the, it's not really, it's not really the breath. It's the burps that come along with the gyros. And if you're, you know, if you're assuming you're having a beer, if you have a beer or two after eating Forget a gyro, it. you're just. Forget it. You're lighting fires at whoever you're talking. You're fucking. It's coming out both ends. Yes, dude, you are really doing damage to whoever you're talking to. You know, but but she's still with him. She still like the girl breath. Yeah, it seems like you know, you know, she found it funny. Like she found out we were all fucking firing at him, being like, "Oh, dude, this big test." Like seeing out who will, uh, who will. Uh, if this is the last supper or not. Yeah. yeah. Who, will, who will fight against the relentless gyro so if this is the last date, I'm getting the food that I love. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is a tremendous amount of gyro. All right. What's worse than <clears throat> gyro on a first date, third date, whatever it is, call it, where you don't have her locked in yet, or um, chicken wings covered in sauce. So the mess versus the breath. Because your third date, or what is that? The second date I mean, date he's on? allowed to test her, too. You know? Like... I, I kind of feel like if you can't roll with some wings that I don't hear, we're not meant to be. But it's like the last thing you want to be doing with a, a new girl is like getting all messy, you know, having to ask the waiter for more napkins. It just, 
you can easily avoid that. I wouldn't do it on the, on the first date, but I think that's like a if if we're still together three you know three maybe four dates and we're out at a bar, I can't order wings without feeling embarrassed in front of you. Then it was never going to work anyways. It's not even the messiness is one thing with the wings. The other thing is the aggressiveness that you got to get after those fuckers with. You know, yeah, like you're to like you're you're cleaning your, the your fucking teeth. drum. Yeah, and then if you don't clean it, you she might be judging you about. You know, how you eat your wing like a but pussy. You, you, you can't. Yeah, well, that's your well, role. You have to do that too. You got to eat it like a man. <laughs> it's not even embarrassing. It's more almost setting yourself up for failure a little, I guess. Yeah, it's like ribs too. Right, ribs definitely. I feel like ribs yeah. are are even worse than wings. Yeah, I don't yeah. really. I don't really eat uh, ribs unless they're smoked ribs because it's too too much sauce. Yeah. Yeah. You order ribs like heads kind of turn like oh going like ribs, ribs. Yeah. unless you're like a actual rib place or like yeah. a cookout yeah true. i think ribs are kind of overrated i gotta say they're no, not, not, not my favorite Gale street bro well gale street is, they do everything right yeah. but i don't know that they have so many good menu items that i wouldn't i don't know if that would be my go-to on or, a date yeah. at gale street sure yeah that's fine i mean there's other stuff there you could get too but that shrimp yeah yeah but french onion yep yeah but I don't know. I feel like that changed Dave's mind. Dave took ribs in the overrated draft, and then yeah, his mind was like, well, they, they're, they're their ribs are awesome. Yeah, they're amazing. They're undeniably they're, awesome. Obviously, Twin Anchors is good. Obviously, mm -hmm. Carson is good. There's all there are. They can be done. Yeah, but like, how many times do you say you eat ribs a year? One. Right. It's more of a luxury, yeah. time and place. I've made it myself, like on the Traeger before. Okay. Pretty Just good. No, uh, no first dates with ribs. No can't do that sure you gotta learn from eddie's friend another thought i have i've been writing these down <laughs> how are they gonna like th they build some buildings knowing that they'll never be able to knock them down right like skyscrapers yeah like it's 50 years for the sears tower and i was just driving past it when i was like how are they taking that thing down if they ever need to there's no possible way. My buddy's like, you're a moron. Like, they do controlled demolitions in Vegas all the time. But I was like, but that's... I feel like Vegas has more space. More space, and it's not 100 and whatever stories. Yeah. I don't know if you can do a controlled demolition for this for the Sears Tower. I don't think you can. But, like, at the same time, when they do new construction, I feel like they often do it where an old building used to stand, but it but it just wasn't like a genuine skyscraper. Yeah, it wasn't that tall. Yeah. yeah. It's a good question. Debris going everywhere. Debris going in the town over if they yeah. knock down Sears Towers. So you can't really have a controlled area. I mean, not to make it too dark, but like. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. That yes. like block, blocked out the sun for a week in 9 I know. So like that would be, that, w that wasn't a controlled demolition, obviously, but it was. Uh, well, what? What? <laughs> what? I was what? gonna, I was gonna make a Pete, I was gonna make a Pete Carroll joke, okay. but it was not tasteful because I think he's wrong for saying that. So, okay, but what? It's kind of funny if you would have made it. Though. Pete Carroll. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought we were gonna have a nine eleven truther over here. No, 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 no. I've never got into those. It's one of those. You want to talk about Building Seven? I don't feel. <laughs> did I never you, felt. Did you, did you forget already? That's like for people that don't know. That's like our steadfast. Like rules we've had for like tinfoil Tuesdays is like we're not like touching nine eleven. Oh, we did. Ah, uh, to mine at least my, me. I I. Or we're not touching like the school shooting. Ones. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. that's too. It's too much. Yeah, I don't want to. I. I don't want to learn about that. Yeah. No. Save it. Yeah. For, save it for free swims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not touching it. We're just saying the top. Yeah. We're just like this is. <laughs> pat us on the back, Danny. We yeah. have morals. What do you have to think? Of, what do you say? Think about building seven, Dan. <clears throat> um, subscribe, and you'll get an exclusive video on all my takes about <laughs> tragedies. Um, no, but I mean, I guess why would they really need to take down a skyscraper? Once that thing's up, it's up. It's a birthmark on the city. I wonder, uh, but like, I wonder if, like, how do you repair it even? Like, oh, well, like, uh, we got this I beams out. Like, how do you, how do you, what if you have like a floor that's damaged, like a section of it that's damaged somehow? I bet we could find a, an answer for this. We have enough friends in the trades where, like, how they would demolition. Yeah, how they would but demolish. it would, it, we're not talking a floor, you know, we're talking half a tower. There's got to be an example of like a, a plane flying into a building that caused like damage that didn't take it down. Like it didn't a, go down. Like a small, like a small, yeah. like did it by accident, you know? I would, you know, they, um, 
the what do they say? I, I, just, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> your brain just shut off in real time. Dear you, real. There used to be this show. Um, it was on the Science Channel. This is like. Oh, I know what it is. Sorry. Okay. Well, like, you want to just jump in? I think we're probably thinking the same thing. How they built the Burj Khalifa? Nope. That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it. That's I not knew it, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> <Keep going. laughs> it's very rare that I'm we're sorry. thinking the same I'm thing sorry. at the same time. I'm sorry. It's a miracle we get along. <laughs> I know. Um, there was a show about what would happen if, like, the world was in oh, yeah, decay, I love that show. Mm-hmm. and like you see, like the vines like running all the way mm-hmm. up the Sears Tower, and like how it would just naturally fall yep. at some point. And also, if you didn't know, the two standing things that would, <laughs> that would the be up. there would be the pyramids and uh, Mount Rushmore. Yeah, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's true. A chief fact stolen. That, you know what? That's chief's fact. I didn't feel good doing that because I know someone who does that. Yeah, I don't feel who good does doing that? that. No one. No one. <laughs> no one. Just <laughs> someone. He would say that he doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's not your quote. You heard it somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess. Would you, so you just, uh, you managed to think of what you were thinking about. I feel like that is. He managed to think what he was thinking about. It was my stolen facts. A- after, after forgetting no. it. I feel like that's the, like nowadays when I'm like, oh, uh, what is that actress from in that show? It's the best brain exercise to not look at Google. It's like your brain deadlifting. If you manage to think mm. of something like a day later, you know, you're like, God, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, I feel I, like my brain grows stronger it, after that. And that's the only thing. It probably does. But then I usually just forget. So it's like my, my brain is atrophied so much that I forget to try to remember what it was. You know, it's like a, a scary thought mm. that whenever you, when you kill brain cells, which you could kill them by doing a lot of drinking, whatever, smoking, mm-hmm. whatever, you're never getting those back. Is that true? I don't think that's, that's true. what they say. And so, like, Who what every, every time they, every time you just drink a beer, you're losing, you're getting dumber, essentially. Yeah, I think that's that's a myth that they say that was yeah. big, big non drinking. Well, then why am I still dumb? But that, that's the thing where I feel like you're probably always dumb. Damn it. Yeah, because they there is a thing where it's like I think it's I'm gonna get the period of time wrong, but like. I'm going to make it up seven years, but over, let's say over a seven year period, every single cell in your body has been replaced. Like it's just dead and gone and removed. Even brain cells. Yeah. I need to look into this. I'm going to go this would be, right uh, this would be a cure. For yeah, a what if there's brain cells fear. you don't want to lose? But that's where it's like, how does memory work? How does the brain work? I don't know. We sh- yeah, well, should we get a neurologist on here? It'd be great. I'd love to talk to him about other things. Yeah. So science has since discovered the neurons can actually regenerate using a really unique method if an area of the brain gets damaged. It's probably remembering what else that actress was in. Mm. Well, brain cells know. do that's... regenerate throughout your entire life. If it's the... We now know that as neurogenesis, the form of new formation of new brain cells, it is not only possible, but it happens every single day. This is not simply a fascinating piece of information. It's news you can use. That comes from a site called Google. <laughs> if it's ever the first answer on Google without having to click, it's I fact. just take it as yeah, fact. Yeah, fact. It's the Bible. They're right. Yes, because the Bible is always right too, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. based on true events. Have you ever yeah. read the Bible? Uh, I mean, I've studied religion. I don't know if I've gone through every page, but I've definitely done the Old Testament stuff. Like you've read it all? Yeah, like we had to for a class. Oh wow! Philosophy of religion. Really? Yeah. You go all the way back through, and it's like you started at Genesis. And you went all the way through, and they were like, "This is what this kind of means. This is what the symbolism symbolism of this could mean." It was it was it was like one of my favorite classes of all time. Really? Yep. Are there any underlooked Bible stories off the top of your head? You know, Noah's Ark, Adam and Eve, they get all the shit. Well, my favorite thing about Noah's Ark is that every story, every every ancient culture has a story exactly like Noah's Ark. Like flood and flood all. Flood myth, yeah. Two animals each. I don't know about that exactly, but like the reigning of 40 days and 40 nights, like it's like the Epic of Gilgamesh is, you know, like some of the earliest tablets ever recovered have, you know, stories like that. I always also... How the fuck do they find these old things, these languages that have been dead for 3,000 years, and then be like, this is what it says? Yeah, I think it says uh, he was building an ark. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like all sorts of like weird shit where it's like the the symbol for DNA um, that just pops up in like ancient cultures all the time, too. So, like, like the actual, not even the, it's like not even the symbol, but it's what DNA actually looks like. 
they'll just find like those like interlocking fucking spiral yeah, things. Yeah. They just find those in like old ancient symbols. Like they're like 6,000, 7,000. How the hell would they know? That's what I mean, man. How do the, how the, f- how does, I don't know. It's one of those things that breaks my brain, but I would spend the rest of my life studying it if I could. If I was independently wealthy, I would do nothing but study about Egypt and ancient. I would be Indiana Jones. I'd be like a rich well, guy like if, Indiana If Jones. you were doing that with the goal to be like, okay, how did they know about this, this DNA? You know, is, yeah. that, is that the goal for someone? How, yeah. How, how do you ever find out? You don't. You might. You could. What if you find something? And then it's the same thing with like the pyramids. Like, well, how do they build those? And if you figure out how they build them, then you can take that technology and bring it to the world today, like Tesla was trying to do. And then you can just make more money that way. Well, it looks like you chose the right job. <laughs> At least one day a week. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays I did. Did you ever um did you ever watch that Malaysian Airlines uh doc on Netflix? I did. You did? Mm-hmm. When you said that, and you know, Jones, you made me think of that guy who was independently looking for pieces of oh yeah the plane. I what like, a wild guy that guy was. He's like, I'm just walking around Africa. I'm into Madagascar, uh, just looking for wreckage. Yeah, this guy just yeah. dedicated a couple years of his life, Danny, to finding pieces of the plane. But he wasn't even wealthy. He was just like a guy who was like a, he he was like a permanent traveler, and yeah. he'd like find odd jobs, and then he like started doing that. Yeah, that's that's tough. He just sees a piece of plastic on the ground he's gonna assume it's a plane oh he would uh, look for things with like barcodes and markings and stuff like that then there was like accusations that he was a fraud and people were planting it there and he was just taking the credit oh now we're talking yeah Mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh taking the credit like someone we know just (laughs) just kidding (laughs) there was a lot of uh interesting parts of that doc i don't know what side i land on i the only side i land on for sure is that the one like uh what was he? he was like an aeronautics journalist or whatever is completely full of shit. Like that guy sucked where he was like, Oh, the Russians, like they broke in. And oh like, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. He that was, was just like making up shit yeah, well, for his getting, own personal gain. He took control of the flight from the basement yeah, to the but, bottom. It's like, dude, yeah, he was, he knocked there. everybody. He like t- stole all the oxygen out of the plane. So everyone was unconscious, but he had his own oxygen mask. It was, it was like one of those things where I'm like, damn, like I wish this was just a movie. Yeah. It would be a sweet ass movie. Yeah. What if some <clears throat> historians, transcribers, whatever, just naturally exaggeratory people, and like what they're writing Noah's Ark, like two animals of each kind? It's like, all right, he took like, but what if that took was, like eight of each real life? But what if they, all they were really doing is taking the DNA from the animals because they had that symbol. <laughs> they knew what DNA was. So they could just like kind of how we have our bites, our um, Willy Mammoth tooth back there. They're trying to recreate that. Maybe that's what they did. That boat sounds like hell. <laughs> A lot of poop on that boat. Dude, could you imagine that? Maybe that that's where boat? the poop deck term came from. Can you imagine the noise on Noah's Ark and the smell? The noise. You got zebras chirping, mm-hmm. lions roaring. Were you even like, That's what? like an underrated Bible passage that you asked about. It's mm-hmm. like after they Noah like kind of restarts the earth, he has like, I think he has like seven sons and he gets like super drunk one night and like passes out naked. And one of his sons is like, ha, look at your dick. And then God's like, you should not make fun of your father like that. So now you're going to have like the worst life and all your kids' lives are going to suck. The and worst like, dick. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like your other <laughs> brother who like covered him is going to be like a king of kings and you're going to be like this fucking piece of shit. It was Noah's dick? Noah was their dad and Noah got like super fucking drunk <laughs> and passed out and his dick was just flapping in the wind. And like, this kid. This kid made fun of him. Imagine. Yeah, so no, so everyone knows Noah's Ark, mm-hmm. but nobody's no, nobody knows that Noah's kid's got a bad dick. No, Noah has Noah's a bad kid dick. was making fun of Noah's dick. Can't make fun of your dad's dick. Can't I know, make fun and then he, dad. then he cursed the kid. Not with a bad dick, just a bad life. But you probably will. that's part, probably part of having a bad life is having a bad dick. Probably you will have yeah. a micro penis for the next forty years. <laughs> probably. No, it was like four thousand. It was. Oh, some, yeah, well, it was he like, lived a long life then. Noah, Noah lived to be like seven hundred. Come on, that's what it says. Imagine uh, the celebratory beers Noah was having after. Like all those animals, yeah. Yeah, all the species. Bro, who lets that ship dock? I'd be like, get those fucking things out of Everybody here. Everybody was dead. <laughs> yeah. so he and his boys. Yeah. Makes you imagine he rolls up. He's like, I don't. I didn't ask for fucking. Yeah, like, I didn't ask for two. Yeah, that's gotta two go zebras. through fucking customs, dude. Like, yeah. you gotta back up. Get this take, raccoon off my leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take that fucking cassowary back to where it was. <laughs> Piece yeah. of shit. Oh, what cassowary. a bad. Like, where do you? Who do you even hang out with? You don't hang out with the birds. Birds are so annoying. They're everywhere. I feel in that like arc. the birds didn't have to come on the boat. Just keep flying. Yeah, birds flew. Yeah. yeah, except for penguins. Penguins had to be on there. Probably hung around the, co- the crow's nest for a. That's, yeah, that's why I call sure it that. Were, yeah. yeah. And then how do you pick 
two lions of all the lions in the world. I think it's probably just the first two that you can capture. <laughs> it's got to be so hard. To, oh, we probably, probably are we assuming pick, he, are we assuming Noah captured all of them, or they just like religiously came to all of them, like just, they did an Evan yeah, Almighty like a signal file line, just kind of walked on board. Like, are, wow, we haven't even gotten to that aspect. It's going around the world capturing all these animals. I wonder how big that boat would be. Oh, was it every species? Did I get the white tigers too? What about bugs? We're talking Disney Cruise. Think of how many bugs there are. I feel what like, if what if he just captured no, no bugs on the boat no bugs, no bugs? No what, are the, bugs what are the birds the gonna eat they're flying they're not on there they're eating uh, fish I, I think it was a fasted fasted cruise there's so many things you gotta no think eating. about yeah what are the ant eaters eating <laughs> yeah good point. No ants. good point no ants but also an ant is getting crushed by a Elephants? bison within yeah. 30 seconds of getting on that arc. you got an ant eater do i have one <laughs> do i own one like an exotic animal no, he's asking if my like penis? Noah, you circumcise your dick. <laughs> <laughs> no. My parents nope. took care of it earlier. Yeah, oh, okay. there you go. Are you an ant eater? No. No? No. <laughs> the most derogatory way of asking someone. Yeah. Dude, this is the best. The best. We, had, we had a kid on our hockey team. We called. He was a French-Canadian kid. We called him Como Se Va. I think he was the only ant eater on the team. Hog. Huge dick. Really? But we would just make fun. We're like, yeah, your dick's huge, but like, look at it. It's an ant eater. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course it is. It all, yeah. that, all that extra skin on it. Yeah. That was the best way to fuck with people, fuck with your buddies who were ant eaters. Yep. Let's just call them an ant eater. Yeah, they didn't take kindly to that ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to suck. <laughs> well, I have buddies that have taken it in stride now. Have you seen like, the put that uh, fucking ant away? The protesters who walk around like the painter suit with a big red blotch over their crotch. Oh, because they're protesting they're pro- circumcision. Because uh, they think it's like uh, inhumane or something. Yeah. You seen those guys? I'm aware of them. Yeah, but it's I fucking weird. I don't know. It's so weird outside. to dedicate your life to that cause. It's probably dedicate all the yourself anti. to any cause, you know? Yeah, but I wonder if they're all anteaters being like, we just got to get more people on board. <laughs> yeah, with they're lashing. Yeah, We're yeah. not freaks. We got to be, become the majority. Yeah. It's the press boys for the anteaters. No. <laughs> all right, we could end on anteaters. All right. Um, Harry's got the giggles over there. It's probably an anteater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, leave a comment. Leave a thumbs up subscribe doesn't that help subscribe yeah, subscribe yeah. follow we're like accounts, i think please. we're almost at sixty five thousand on uh youtube yeah. so thank you guys hop, hop in there and uh yeah go get some Speculate rollback what kind of dick danny has yeah. he was a little non-committal about it mm-hmm. i said no but it's fine <laughs> so if you're gonna leave a comment about it you can <laughs> get some rollback get some uh, taste for chicago.com beef kit and get it all i might do that this weekend for the derby there you go yeah um all right everybody Thank you, and we will see you all tomorrow.